important that you have an active relationship with Christ. Have an active uh, 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 participation in the Word of God. You, you need to do this. It's not a one-time thing. I, I received the Lord uh, some five years ago and I, I haven't seen Him since. That's not what it is. This is a relationship thing. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ through His Word, through the Holy Spirit. You see. So He says, Therefore, my brethren, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This, my friend, is the description of a born-again Christian, and he does these things, and he remains in a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 3, 3, verses 5 and also 7, he says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He says, You must be born again. This is what Jesus says. There's no other way. You must be born again. You see? This person, this spiritual person, he is renewed. Romans 12, 2 talks about it. You, know, you got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let that mind be renewed. This person is an, an, he's a new creature. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, All things are passed away. Behold, it's all new now. This person, this spiritual person, has received God's righteousness through faith in Christ. Philippians 3.9 So now, now that I have described to you both the natural and the spiritual man, there is yet a subdivision of the spiritual man that is very troubling. You know, and I, I, say, I say troubling because this person, though spiritual, is acting as if he were a carnal man. You know, we sometimes refer to this person as a carnal Christian. You see? But what does it mean to be a carnal Christian? Although a person is, is regenerated and have received the new life of the Spirit, they do retain a sinful nature with all its evil inclinations. So not because you born again, uh, this old nature is gone. You see, you have a new nature. But that nature is there to come up against you and try to cause you to do the wrong thing. That's why you have to come against it. You see, you've got to come against this nature. You've got to kill this thing. You know, Galatians 5, 16 says, uh, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, if you're going to walk in the Spirit, he's talking to the, the spiritual man, he said, walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the needs of the flesh. That means it's there. And if you don't walk in the Spirit, the needs and the lust of the flesh will come up and overtake you. You see, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to each other so that you cannot do the things that you would like to do. That's a war inside of you, my friend. But if you are led of the spirit, you are not under the law. No, the works of the flesh are obvious. They're obvious, man. You just look around. Adultery, fornication, you know, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, you know, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, you know, sedition, heresies, you know, envying, murder, drunkenness, you know, revelings, and you know, things like that. You know, you just look, you see all these things happening. That's that's not of the spirit. These things are are, are, are things uh, of the flesh. That's what they are. You say, I warn you, as I did before. This is what he's saying to them: that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not expect, my friend, that if you want to do all of these things or any of these things and figure you're going to inherit the kingdom of God, you've got something else coming. You're wrong. It's not going to happen, my friend. It won't happen. You know, 
there is something I'm going to say to you uh, that may uh, or it may not surprise you but nevertheless I'd like to have you on the body of attention you know I want to keep your attention Th this program is so important the things I'm talking about man it's about you me it's about all of us I want you to listen I want you to listen my friend listen to this the sinful nature that remains in the regenerated believer cannot be made good let me say that again that nature that sinful nature that's in you even after you who have received Jesus Christ and have become regenerated that sinful nature cannot be made good that's not what it's all about it's not the Holy Spirit coming in you know zapping that old nature and changing it and making it good no that's why Jesus said you must be born again you know this nature it must be overcome and put to death through the power and grace of the Holy Spirit we gotta kill this thing this thing is a is an enemy of, of, of your soul you gotta kill it you see Romans 8 13 says for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the Spirit do modify the deeds of the body you shall live that's what it says you know, this is the war that goes on after you have become regenerated. That sinful nature must be put to death. There is no other way. The sooner you understand that, the sooner you can become a victor and not a victim. You've got to understand this. Don't try. Don't try anyway. Don't even try to trying to make it go. There is no way. Revelation 3:20. Jesus said, "Behold, I stand at the door and I knock." If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and I am set down with my father in his throne. So the key, my friend, is to deny yourself daily. Jesus said in Matthew 16:24. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Another thing you've got to do, you've got to remove every hindrance or sin. The writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You've got to do this. Another thing, you've got to resist all sinful inclinations. All these sinful inclinations, you, you have to resist them. Galatians 5.16 says, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. You've got to live by the Spirit. Get into that word daily. Meditate on God's word. Another thing. You've got to wage war against the sinful nature. You've got to crucify it and you've got to put it to death. No other way. No compromising. That's all you have to do. Believers, by the power of the Holy Spirit, must wage war against the sinful nature. They must crucify it. Galatians 5.24 and they must put it to death Colossians 3.5 check it out by this process of self-denial and, and your yielding to the Holy Spirit as he performs a work of sanctification in your life uh, you know believers in Christ will then begin to experience that freedom they will have a liberation from the power of, of their sinful nature you know, and then they will be able to live uh, their lives as, as spiritual Christians. They've got to do this. That's how important it is. Galatians 5, 16 again says, I'll say it again, I keep saying it. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh.